Uh, what is this little beauty? Well, okay, let me see if I can turn it around. Hmm. There's like no right way. There, that's, that's close enough. Anyone want to take a stab at this? I'll show you another area and then I'll go into higher power. And I always tell my residents if they, if they guess the diagnosis from low power and get it wrong, it's okay. I'll give them half a point for boldness and then I'll give them a higher power view. So, so bold but wrong still gets you something. Not in the real world, but in the teaching world it works, okay? Low power, higher mind. There you go. That's right. Recognize the low power is correct. And Philippe, you got it right. Is it, this is a beautiful trico folliculoma. But trichoadenoma is a totally legit and understandable answer. And this is, goes back to what I said, that all of these follicular tumors have a lot of overlap, okay? The key here to me is that you've got a central cystic space, okay? Classically, this space communicates up and connects to the epidermis. But you gotta remember that when you have cystic, a, a, a lesion that's like kind of a crater that goes up to the epidermis and then comes down and becomes a cyst, if you cut straight through the middle of it when you're sectioning, you know, grossing, and you gross it right in the middle, and you get a perfect histology section right through it, then you're gonna see this opening out to the surface and you can tell it's a big dilated hair follicle with little buds of hair follicles coming off of it. And you'll say, ah, trico folliculoma. And that's what the books always show because that's what the classic example is. But the problem is that in real life, there's three dimensional things. And a lot of times if you don't cut right down the middle and you cut a little bit to the side, what you're gonna see is a cyst in the dermis and you won't see that connection. This is true of any sort of invaginated cystic lesion, a trichofolliculomas, keratoacanthomas, or keratoacanthoma variant of squamous cell carcinoma, whichever name you like. I've got a YouTube video on that and you can watch it and debate with me in the comments if you like, if you're into that sort of thing. Molluscum contagiosum is a great example. If you get right through the umbilication, it looks that perfect little cup, but there's also plenty of times that you'll see it and it looks like a cyst in the dermis. So that's a good general truth that, that just because it looks like a cyst, most of the cysts that we see, like even regular um, epithelial inclusion cysts or follicular and fundibular cysts, whatever name you like, epidermoid cysts, they connect up to the surface. They have a little punctum that drains um, uh, you know, the smelly keratin debris out of it clinically. So uh, it's just a matter of whether you get a cut that shows that. Okay. And um, yeah, so in the middle, we've got basically a dilated hair follicle. And just like the infundibular a portion of a hair follicle or the follicular infundibular cyst, which some people call EIC or epidermoid cyst, the lining basically here looks more or less like epidermis. We get stratified squamous epithelium. Usually there'll be a little bit of a granular layer, sometimes not depending. Um, and then kind of loose flaky keratin in the inside. You may have some hair shafts in here too. The key is what's happening outside of that cyst. And what you have here are basically little basaloid islands that are little immature, irregular, malformed hair follicles, little baby hair follicles. And here's a perfect example, look at that. We got the little hair root with the germinative epithelium and you can see it starting the transition to make, almost wants to make a little hair shaft and it's making an inner root sheath. The inner root sheath is that portion that has these little, these little uh, bright orangey red globules that we call trichohyalin granules, right? With the purple granules on the surface of the skin are keratohyaline granules. These reddish orange granules uh, that are bright and fiery down in the hair follicle we call trichohyaline granules. So you can see them in normal hair follicles and also in tumors with um, inner root sheath differentiation. And then here's outer root sheath differentiation, the stuff that looks like those glycogenated clear cells, like the little piano keys when they're well organized. So this is basically like a little baby hair hair uh, follicle that's trying to form and is growing into the center of the cyst. So basically the idea is that this is a mother follicle and there's all these little tiny baby follicles around it. Or uh, Dr. Rapini, I think like to say the hen and chicks, this is like the mama hen and all of her little baby chicks uh, surrounding her. Um, the, uh, the point that um, someone made about trichoadenoma is really good. A lot of times you get cystic spaces here. These little side follicles make little cysts. And so if you gave me a cut just of of this, you're seeing all of these little tiny cysts close together, and that's what trichoadenoma is supposed to look like. In my experience, trichoadenoma is quite rare because most of the time when I see stuff that looks kind of like trichoadenoma, 
other parts of the tumor actually have some basaloid stuff that looks more like trichoepithelioma or a big cystic space that looks more like trichofolliculoma. So to find a trichoadenoma that just has all of these little cysts together, I feel like is pretty rare. I only have a few of them in my whole, you know, multi-thousand slide uh, study sets. But again, this just highlights how much overlap there is between all of these different hair follicle uh, tumors. I mean, I think Bernie Ackerman wrote like a huge thick book just on hair follicle tumors. So, you know, if you've got a lot of, you got a lot of spare time on your hands now, so go try to find a copy of that and, um, and become the expert. Okay. So I would, I would call this a, um, a, a trico uh, folliculoma. The other thing you could think about here, because you're having all sorts of different um, types of hair follicle differentiation, there's an entity called pan folliculoma. And pan folliculomas basically have matricle, outer root sheath, inner root sheath, all of those different things combined together. And they can either be a, a nodule, like a cystic nodule down deep, um, or they can be uh, uh, along the surface, kind of hooked onto the epidermis. Um, they're also benign. So again, if you call this a cystic pan folliculoma, or if you say, oh, look at that little tiny baby hair uh, root developing in that cute, so pretty. Um, if you want to call it trichofolliculoma or trichoadenoma or even trichoepithelioma with cystic change, it's all benign and okay. So do not be afraid, right? There are other things that we should be worried about during the day. Um, this is not one of them.